Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for another video. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be taking an in-depth look at our 2024 Texas Longhorns football team. We're going to do a complete preview of their roster, seeing who they lost from last season, who they're bringing in for this season. But we're also going to try to predict the outcome for their schedule, going game by game, seeing which games we think they're going to win, lose, and what we predict their final record will be. The 2024 season is just around the corner. Go ahead, hit that like button, and subscribe. If you have any comments, drop them below, and I will respond. So these 2024 Texas Longhorns, they finally reached the pinnacle of college football. They didn't win the national championship last season, but Sarkeesian finally got over the hump. A lot of people have been doubting his coaching ability since his USC days, he finally put it together for the Texas Longhorns this past year. They beat Alabama in Tuscaloosa. He beat Saban. They won the Big 12. They made the playoffs. Yes, they lost in the semifinals, but they got there. That's a place that Texas should be every single year. Texas is one of the biggest brands in all of college football, top five brand. They should be in the national championship discussion every single season they finally at least got back into that national championship discussion and a lot of people have them making the playoffs again the second year in a row this upcoming season he's recruited at an extremely high level he's been working the portal this is where texas should be now a lot of people, like I said, have them making the playoffs this year, but they lost a lot of pieces from last year's squad. They've been completely decimated at the skill positions. They lost a lot of wide receivers, and they lost a lot on their D-line. They're going into the SEC right now, obviously the most physical, toughest, deepest conference in all of college football. You're going to need those playmakers. You're going to need those guys in the trenches on the offensive line, but especially on the defensive line. Now, they have a couple really physical matchups early in the season, so it's really going to test their mettle. It's going to test how well has Sarkeesian replaced a lot of those NFL caliber players. Quinn Ewers did decide to come back for another season, so that gives them an experienced quarterback to kind of guide them through till some of those guys who are first-year starters at Texas can adapt to the game-time games. But they did lose massive talent. They lost a Xavier Worthy, they lost a Donnie Mitchell, they lost Jordan Winningham, they lost a tight end Sanders, they lost a running back Brooks. All those guys are off to the NFL, but Sarkeesian went into the portal, he uh, picked up Isaiah Bond from Alabama, he picked up Matthew Golden from Houston, uh, Bolden from Oregon State, the tight end Niblack from Alabama, but his biggest advantage is he has four returning starters on the offensive line. Do not overlook that. That is massive. That buys Ewers time to find the new playmakers, but it also assists the running game. They're going to have holes. A quarterback's best friend is a really good running game. With an experienced line, they're going to have time for the passing game and time to get the running game going. Now, Ewers, obviously, he's had a lot of first-round hype coming up. He has to live up to that. Will this be the season when he has a full 12-game schedule? He puts it together every single game. He does usually play the best in the biggest moments, though, and you do have Manning breathing down his neck. They had a top 25 offense last year, top 20 defense. They were very balanced, but they lost a lot of defensive players. Sweat, Murphy, Ford, all those guys are off to the NFL, but they have been working the portal and they have been recruiting. Let's take a look at their schedule. They kick things off Saturday, August 31st, versus Colorado State. Obviously, Colorado State's not, not a pushover, but this is more of a warm-up game. A lot of first-year starters in the Texas scheme on offense. A lot of new starters on the defensive line. A couple cupcake games, try to get things warm. Texas is going to win this big. I'm going to say like a 44-17 to game. They're 1-0. But it doesn't get easier. Saturday, September 7th, at Michigan. They don't even have the advantage of playing Michigan at home. They have to go to Michigan, one of the toughest three places to play, the big house to play the defending national champions. Yes, the team's been completely different. Harbaugh's gone, completely new schemes, new coach. Moore's the coach there now. So Michigan, obviously, they lost their whole team to the draft pretty much. I think they only have one starter coming back on offense. So they'll be a little different. But they're going to be physical. Like I said, coming out of the gate, there's going to be physical matchups that's going to test Texas 
in the trenches, especially on defense. This game's going to be tough. Texas could easily lose this 50-50 just because it's a punch in the mouth right out of the gate, out of conference, top 10 matchup. Both teams could be in the top 10 here. But I'm going to go with Texas squeaking out a really close win on the road versus Michigan. Let's say it's going to be like a 28-24. to They're 2-0. Then they follow that up versus UTSA. They're actually not a bad team, but Texas is obviously way more talented. They're going to win this, but I think it'll be a little higher scoring. It'll be a 38-27 to game. They're 3-0. Then Saturday, September 1st versus UL Monroe. They're going to beat them. That game's not going to be close. Let's say it's like a 44-14 to 14 game, and they're 4-0. Then Saturday, September 28th versus Mississippi State. They're getting into SEC play. Jeff Levy's the new coach, but this team's been completely decimated. A completely new roster. It's going to be a blowout. Let's say a 48-17, to 17, and they're 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 0. Oh. They follow that up, obviously, the massive rivalry game, Saturday, October 12th versus Oklahoma. Oklahoma got this game last season. This game's always close. It's always a shootout. always comes down to the fourth quarter, sometimes to the very last possession, just like it did last season. Texas lost it last year. It was their game. They lost it. I have them getting some revenge and winning it this year. This game, they basically flip-flop every single season. But I have Texas winning this one versus Oklahoma. It's going to be like a 33-27 to game, and they're 6-0. Then, nonstop, getting into SEC Conference play, really tough schedule. After that, Saturday, October 19th versus Georgia. Wow. So, Georgia obviously is really tough. You're playing Georgia, but you have the advantage of Georgia, who could be the number one team coming to Texas. I think that's the difference maker here. That's what makes the difference in this game. If you were going to Athens, Georgia wins. But I think Texas beats Georgia at home. Texas is not afraid of anyone. They went to Tuscaloosa, beat Bama last year, so they can beat Georgia in their house. I have Texas beating Georgia, moving to 7-0. and But it's going to be a close game. I'm going to say a 30-27 to game, and they're 7-0. and Saturday, October 26th, they have Vanderbilt. They're going to win that. It's probably going to be like a 50-17 game, and they're 8-0. Saturday, November 9th versus Florida. Florida is a very talented roster, but Billy Napier has a lot of pressure on him. His seat's on fire. He has the most pressure on him than any coach in college football, and he has the most difficult college football schedule I've ever seen in my life. Second half of the season, they're going to be dropping games. He might even be fired by this point. I don't know. But Texas is going to beat them pretty bad. Let's say this one's going to be, I think it's going to be a high score. I think it's going to be a 48-21 to 21 game. And Texas is 9-0. and Saturday, November 16th versus Arkansas. It's kind of an older rivalry. These teams are kind of border teams. But Arkansas, Sam Pittman, they're flying through coordinators. They have almost no one coming back from that team. Massive talent advantage for Texas. Texas beats up their local border rival team. They beat them pretty bad. Let's say this game is going to be like a 40 to 20. Texas is now 10 and 0. Saturday, November 23rd versus Kentucky. Kentucky's always a tough team, always a physical team under Stoops. They run the ball well. They have the quarterback transferring over from Georgia. So they're actually going to have a pretty decent offense. They always have a physical defense. Texas is probably going to be somewhat worn out and beat up at this point of the year. But I have Texas winning in a closer one than you would think. Let's say it's going to be like a 27-23 to 23 game, and Texas is 11-0. and 0. They're top three at this point, possibly maybe even one or two. They end the season in a massive rivalry game, a game we haven't seen since they left the Big 12, Saturday, November 30th at Texas A&M. Obviously, College Station, the Aggies, one of the hardest places to play, one of the best home field advantages. Aggies also have a lot of difference on their team. They're bringing in Elko as the head coach. They still have Wigman at the quarterback position. They have a top 10 talented roster just like Texas does. So they're not going to be out talented by Texas, but it's a new system. I think if Texas plays them first half, they beat them. But I think Texas at this point gets caught looking at the SEC championship playoffs. And I actually think the Aggies surprised them, beat this one in a close one, a 27-24. Texas drops the very last game of the year. There has to be an upset somewhere. That's where it is. But it's okay. They finished the season 11-1. and That's still making the playoffs. And I have them making the SEC championship where they could play Georgia, 
Bama, Old Miss. We don't know, but they do get back to the playoffs. So that's my breakdown of our 2024 Texas Longhorns. If you have any comments, drop them below. I will respond and hit that subscribe button. Thank you.